Now, this is a video on, on abnormality of the aortic valve. Okay, This is a parasitic long axis view and what you will see here, the aortic valve doesn't look right. Okay, uh, Now let's zoom up on it. If you look at the, the two cusps of the aortic valve, there's, there seems to be something abnormal about it and this gentleman was born in 1968 so it's about you know 50 years old or so so it's not like a 50 year old valve the valve leaflet itself looks a little bit thickened than normal this valve leaflet which is the non coronary cusp here does not seem to be opening at all you can't see it opening that well okay and then if you look at another zoomed picture and you freeze it, what you will find is an eccentric closure line. So if this is the iota here, this is the midline of the iota. Okay, so from the inner edge to the inner edge, this somewhere here is going to be the absolute midline of the iota. So you would expect the aortic valve closure lines to be here, whereas it seems to be off center, off the midline, of the closure line. So all of these things should immediately point you towards a possible abnormality of the aortic valve and the commonest abnormality in this instance is what is called a bicuspid aortic valve. So let's see the short axis to see how we can rule that out. Now this is the short axis. Okay. Now in the short axis, the moment you, now if you look at it in closure during diastole, it almost feels as if this is the Mercedes-Benz sign. So you have the three cusps, okay? It looks as if there are three cusps. But pay some closer attention. I'm going to go backwards and forwards. Okay, this is during full closure. You can still see that gap in the center. Can you see this thing here? Now, it means that the three cusps are not really approximating well enough. Number one. Number two, look at how thick the cusps are compared to a normal. In a minute, I'll show you a normal aortic valve cusp. Now, this is a normal aortic valve cusp. And, and even though this patient is actually older than the other patient, see how thin and leaf-like. When it opens, you can, you can actually hardly see the cusps. And I'm going back and forth. You are hardly able to notice the cusp, okay? Uh, and that's how thin and leaf-like a normal aortic valve cusp should be. On the other hand, in the patient that we have, see how thickened the cusps are. Second, you can see this little gap in the middle that clearly says that there, the approximation or the closure of the commissures, it's not, it's not good enough and there is a hole. You're expecting, you're going to, if you put some color doppler, you'll expect some aortic regurgitation. <coughs> However, Going back to the number of cusps, <clears throat> okay. in diastole, when the aortic valve is closed, this it looks like there are three cusps. And this is the thing with the bike, with, a, with, a, with the aortic valve. You should never count the cusps, the number of cusps in diastole when the valve is closed. You must always do that when the valve is open in systole. So now I'm going to go slowly frame by frame to, to systole. Okay. This is still closure. Ah, okay, there. This is exactly what I want. Okay, the valve is closed. This is diastole. Okay, the next frame, the valve is going to open. Sorry, the other way. Okay, this is in systole and this is the next frame of diastole. So let me just go see how when the valve is open, you can see clearly two cusps. This is one cusp here and this is the other cusp. So let me go back and forth again. Okay, this is full systole when the entire valve is open. Okay, one cusp here, this is peak of systole, okay, and then the valve is slowly closing and during closure, it gives you the misleading info, uh, impression that there are three cusps like the Mercedes-Benz sign, okay. 
So never interpret, never count the number of cusps of an aortic valve during diastolic closure. Always do that during systolic opening and try and slow it down frame by frame. Okay, let's go to a normal aortic valve and see how it looks when it opens in systole. This is a normal, this is a normal aortic valve, okay, and I'm going to freeze it, okay. This is in diastole and you can see the three cusps, one, and if with the eye of fate, just see, um, let me increase the gain a little bit, one, two, and three, and here you can't see any gap in the middle, so it's approximating well. Now, I'm going to play it again, okay, and now when you can see this, one cusp here, second cusp here, so that's the right coronary cusp. This is the left coronary cusp and this here is the non-coronary cusp. So let me just uh, go slowly. This is in peak systole, okay, and you can still see one, two, and three. Okay, keep following that and then I'm going for slowly forwards again here it's very clear one two and three and then in closure you can see the closure of the Mercedes Benz okay uh, this is how a normal aortic valve cusp looks like and let's just go back to our Iotic, the bicuspid aortic valve in systole. So in systole, for the bicuspid aortic valve, okay, now going, look at this, okay. Unlike the three cusps that we saw, you can clearly see one here and another one is going to come, see, it's looking, this is almost looking, this is how it looks, it looks like a mitral valve compared to a tricuspid aortic valve. So to recap, the first the first clue must always be in the parastinal long axis when you have a thickening of the aortic valve out of proportion to the age of a patient. Second, the closure line must be off the midline of the aorta. So if this is the horizon, this is the midline of the aorta, this is just a little bit off center. So you would expect the closure line to be here Whereas uh, in this particular case, it is deviated slightly towards the right ventricle and it's here, okay? So again, the closure line, you would expect the closure line to be the, num the closure line here, number one. Whereas what you are seeing here is closure line number two, which is an eccentric closure line. Sometimes you can have a closure line towards the other side, so number three, so here, instead of number one. Okay, so all it takes is a, a couple of millimeters away from the midline. See, the closure line one is this particular thing. That is the midline of the iota. Okay, that's the midline of the iota, and that's where you want it to be. And all you have is a little bit of a deviation away from the midline. And then finally, when you then come to uh, <clears throat> when you then come to this, you look for systole. And you look for the number of cusps in systole, not, do not count the number of cusps in diastole and that is how you will confirm it, okay? That's in a nutshell, that's the bicuspid aortic valve assessment for you.